we are in the tenth shloka anekakaratam bhinnam विश्वम भुवन संचय शिवाद्यवन पर्यतम तत्सर्व मयि संस्थित This is not simply a meditation on that one line, I am there. It goes on to expound further on the extensiveness of that. That represents the Supreme Consciousness, the Eternal Absolute, which is our only goal. And uh, this Atmasatchakara Prakarana is to give the full significance of that so that it will be difficult to concentrate our mind on only a single point. On the contrary, if it is to be on a very big circle with all the periphery and the circumference and its area, it can graze anywhere within the jurisdiction of the periphery of the circle. So it will be easier for that purpose it is not simply that that alone it will take a long time it is going to be mechanical repeated as so on so on on the contrary if you expound the full significance of that what do you mean by that what is that supreme consciousness which is supposed to be our ultimate goal then it is a very extensive meditation and now the extensiveness goes further still. He says, you will have to think that myself is everything both unmanifested, the potential, the quantity, and all manifestations from the topmost level to the lowest level possible. The topmost level is the God, the topmost level is not Shiva. So you're supposed to be the representation of that formless being, that absolute reality. We are not talking of Lord Shiva as represented by his form. We are talking of an impersonal God, an impersonal God with the representative of Brahman. Because now we are dealing with the Shaivagama, where they don't use the word Brahman. According to them, the ultimate reality is called Shiva. Call what you mean. It doesn't make much of a difference. So, he says, I am this entire universe which consists of the seven worlds up and the seven worlds down. Each world is called a Bhuvana. So, we have got the fourteen Bhuvanas, Chaturthasya Bhuvana, seven up and seven down. That is, Maharloka, Janaloka, Tapaloka, Satyaloka, Brahmaloka, like that upwards. And downwards, that is what is called Sukhada, Tala, Sada, Vata, Allah. Like that, we have got so many. So there are 14 Bhuvanas. And in these 14 Bhuvanas, there are gods, there are semi divine beings, there are Gandharvas, there are extras, there are men, there are animals, there are wolves, reptiles, birds, various varieties with uh, different forms. There is no uh, harmony between one form and another. Even among the animals, the donkey looks different from a cow. So, anekakara sambhinnam. Sambhinnam means divided. Well divided, well separated. There is no question of any similarity at all. Well separated by many forms. This entire universe consists of beings which are all separated in their various forms um, widely, widely separated from each other. Aneka akara sambhinna. Akara means form. Sambhinna means divided. Aneka akara sambhinna. <coughs> then what? Bhuvana sanchayam. Sanchayam means an assembly. See a car is an assembly 
of various components and parts like the engine, the radiator, the clutch, the accelerator and so many things. And similarly, this universe consists of an assembly of 14 worlds, 14 lokas, 14 bhuvanas. So, bhuvana satsayam, it consists of an assembly of 14 bhuvanas. And that sort of universe, Vishwam, Vishwam means the universe, such a sort of universe. And I am that universe. Not only that, universe is something that is only a manifested part of that supreme being. So he says, now he starts from that unmanifested, that unseen, that unthinkable, that supreme consciousness, he starts from that, Shiva the Avani Pariyantam. Starting from Lord Shiva, the supreme being, the supreme consciousness, the homeless one, and Avani Pariyantam. Adi means starting from. Starting from Lord Shiva, Avani Pariyantam. Avani means this year. This year means including all the manifestations of the earth, the worms, the animals, the reptiles, the birds, the men. So all these things are included when you say Avani. Avani means the earth. But here it includes all the earth things too. So, Shiva Javani Pariyatta. Pariyatta means up to that, inclusive of. Starting from that, inclusive of everything, all that is treated at all levels. Missing not a single link whatsoever in between. All things are included. Tat Sarvam Mai Samstita. All this is in me. I am the self which consists of the entire universe. I am the Atman which consists of this entire universe. Starting from not only the universe, but starting from the highest manifestation of Lord Shiva to the lowest manifestation possible, which, were, which are visible. The visible manifestation and the invisible unmanifested ones. All these things are included. The visible manifested, the invisible manifested. And the unmanifested is of course invisible also. So all these things are included. Here is a listening. Normally if you read it, we will just skip through, yes, yes, it is another description like that. This contains the greatest of pitfalls. Unless we are aware of the Vedas and the Upanishads, you cannot interpret it in the proper way. This gives a very good caution, a very big warning to the modern people who are taking up any type of meditation, whether they are sanctioned in the books or not, because they are Guru has told them. And many of them are likely to lead us into diseases which can never be cured. And materially too, they could bring calamities. All your roof would collapse. Your financial roof, your economic roof, your social roof, everything would collapse in no time. And you will never link it that this is because of my wrong education. For then there is an anecdote in the Chandra of Upanishad. There were five great Vedic scholars. All the five were great men. They were not only Vedic scholars, they were meditators. For 40 years of their life, for 50 years of their life, they have been constantly meditating, not for half an hour or one hour like us, 7 to 8 p.m. No. They have been 24 hours meditating all through their life. And they knew every intricacy of that supreme being they are supposed to. They have studied, they have gone to various conferences and seminars, and wherever they went, they always came talk during the discussion. Nobody could shake them, shake their arguments. And not only that, they were gurus, they were preceptors in their turn. And they accumulated so much fame, name throughout the world. Everybody when they heard about, oh my Lord, you are his disciple. People will regard even his disciple with the same regard as they could their preceptor. They were so famous. Not only that, many of them had a lot of vehicles, chariots, and a number of houses full of wealth. There was nothing which they needed, then everything in full, all material.
material comforts, whatever you mention, it was theirs. But the mind was not at peace. The mind was still continued to be agitated. They knew something is wrong in our meditation. They were meditating on the formless supreme Brahman, the Atma. Throughout, that is what they were doing. In the Upanishads, there is a specific name for that Atma, who is all, who is the totality. The specific name is, she is known as Vaishwana Atma. And this story itself is called Vaishwana Vidya. Vaishwana Vidya means meditation. Vishwa, Vaishwana Vidya means a meditation on the supreme formless self. So what is the Vaishwana? Vaishwana, Vishwa means the universe, Nara means a man, so Vaishwana represents the cosmic being. The Atman is the cosmic being who is the totality in the universal. How to do the meditation? That is the subject in the Upanishad. And the Chandukya is one of the most authentic, authoritative and oldest of Upanishads. And uh, these four people, each one of them is highly dissatisfied. In spite of the fact, they were stone rich, each of them. And there is nothing which they ever lack. Name, fame, regard, everywhere they were honored. But their mind was not at peace. One day, all these four joined together and asked each other, I say, can you tell me, what actually is this by John Rapunna? Then, each one said, this is why Father of Brahma. Some of them couldn't come to a conclusion. And then they found the meditation, each one was absolutely different from that of the other. There was no common forum at all on which they could discuss. We found my wrong. Each one of us is so famous. Whatever we say is authentic in this world of spirituality. And we could never agree together as to what is this Vaishwana Brahma. And we have been meditating for a long time. What a blunder. So what shall we do? They said in our own locality, there is one Aruni Uddharaka, a very famous person. Let us go to him. He is supposed to be far greater than us in his scholarship, in his meditation, in his austerities, in everything. Let us go to him. I am sure he should have known. Because we have always seen him very happy and in a pleasant mood. He has never been in a black mood at any time. So this is one of the characteristics of a Jivan Mukta who has reached the highest state of consciousness. These people are going from a distance he has espied them, he has seen them coming. He said, my Lord, all these four big people together are coming. <coughs> then today I am last. They are going to definitely ask me in this Atman, they are the only thing which where I am myself in doubt. And my reputation will be at stake. And I being on that spiritual path, well whatever it takes, they will take it as correct. But I cannot mislead them. A yeah, man on the spiritual path, he is always straightforward. If he doesn't know something, he has to say, I'm sorry, I don't know. If he is to play ball, if he is to be crooked, he can never reach the end of his spirituality. He can never reach his goal. So after a lot of deliberation, he decided to be frank with God. The moment they came, he didn't wait for them to begin their problem. The moment they came, he said, Gentlemen, welcome to you all. But I can't really say welcome because I won't be able to solve your problem. I know you have come with this problem about the Atman. I am so sorry, that is my problem too. Even though I have been meditating, but I am not going to be able to have that peace of mind. Well, because I am a big man, outwardly I was laughing. You don't know what an agony, agony I was causing through at night. He said, come on, let us all go to the king of this country, Ashwapati, who is a Kshatriya, who belongs to the warrior race. He is not a Brahmin, but he belongs to the warrior race. But he is reputed to be extremely righteous, and the people are very happy in his kingdom. There is nobody who is unhappy. 
And the way in which he handles things, it definitely shows that he has got the wisdom of a Brahmajana. Nobody else can do it with such a precision and with giving satisfaction to all. Nobody else can do it. Let us go. All the five together, they go to Ashapati, the king of the country, and he welcomes them all. The usual way, he offers water to wash their feet, which is called Padya. Water is given to wash their hands, which is called Arghya. Arghya, Padya, then Achamana, so that they are coming to another place where we don't know what sort of vibration will be there. So they have to purify themselves by taking the Lord's name three times. And then he is seated down, standing before them, because they were all very scholars. He said, Sir, because Ashwati thought all Brahmins, if ever they go to a person, they go only to beg for some money. Otherwise they won't. Because they are entitled to beg. Next to the sannyasis, the one who are entitled to beg is these people. And Dakshina, getting money extra at any time, it is their birthright. So he thought they have come for their money. So without asking them, he went, brought one purse of gold coins, he, he presented them. He thought they would say thank you and they will go away. No, they returned that back. No, Ashwati, we are not come for that. Immediately Ashwati said, Sir, I am going to perform a very big sacrifice where I'll be having various priests, 15 priests. The priests are known as Ritviks. So 15 Ritviks I am going to have. But I will trouble you because I know you are bigger than that. But I will give each one of you the same amount of money which I will give to those Ritviks. Because Ritviks are ordinary people, I have to give them a lot of gold coins. I will give you that much. They said, thank you, no, we are not come from them. Now give us a the last. He said, sir, then what do you want? Tell me. They said, we want that Atavidya. We want the technique of proper meditation the Supreme Brahman. We want to be explained as to what the Supreme Vaishwara Atman is. And we know that you have got it. Sir, please, we are your students. Even though normally a Brahmin never does Namaskar to Kshatriya. Here they have come as disciples. All the five of them prostrated before him. And they said, please accept us as your disciples. Normally the custom is, whenever somebody goes as a disciple to a guru, the guru will never accept them immediately. He will often remind them for a number of years, just as I told you yesterday, 32 years, 32 years, see, Indra had to do five times before he could get the full explanation. So it is not an easy job. But then, he knew that all these people had refined the antenna, the intellect was very good, they were established in a higher level of consciousness, though not at the highest. So, he made an exception, he waived the condition, he said, normally we Satriyas have been keeping it as a secret within ourselves, we have never parted with you, but now that you have asked, I can't refuse, because we are spiritual people. See, the one who has known the Brahman, how can he think that somebody else is different, so I cannot give him, he can't keep it as a secret, so I have to part with him, come tomorrow. The next day they went. They went with a yeah, few tweaks from some particular trees, mango trees, the people tree and all that. Because a shishya cannot go to a guru empty-handed, he has to do some offerings. And the king is one who does sacrifice with offer. The Guru is one who does daily sacrifice. So the disciple takes some offering for oblation for the sacrifice. Some tricks are daily used by saying Indra Yaswata, Varna Yaswata. So they have to do the oblation. For that purpose, this is the only offering they can do. They are forested. They can't purchase a boss, they can't purchase, go to the fancy super bazaar, purchase something great for the king. They can't afford to. So this is the easiest thing they can, pick some twigs, take it and then offer it to them. Samitpani Shrotri Mubhutsara. This is called Samit, these twigs are called. So he took it and went. The king said, well, I shall tell you about the Atman, but before that, let me know 
to what length your education has gone? What is the type of med uh, meditation each one of you are doing? Come on, first one. He asked the first one. What is the meditation that you are doing? Sir, I am meditating on the formless big Atman. But I am meditating on the entire heavens, the heavens above. Then I take it as representing the entire whole Atman. So I am thinking of the heavens with all its enjoyments, with all its objects of enjoyment, with all its gods. So I consider the heavens as the ultimate supreme being and I do my meditation. The king says, yes, very good, you have done nicely. Because you have taken the heavens which is expansive, so all your wealth is expansive, your name and fame is expansive, you have got them all, we have got everything you want from the medieval side. But if only you had gone with this meditation for a few months more, Shiraste Nibhajasyateti, your head would have fallen down. In other words, some great calamity would have overtaken you. It could be some physical disease, it could be some mental disease, it could be some complete disaster in various ways. So some sort of a disaster would have overtaken you, so you have come at the right time. Just like a doctor to whom we go in the early stage of a malady, he says, fortunately I have come in the very first stage, otherwise this is absolutely nobody can treat in this world in the same way. And he said, look here, the heaven is only the head of the Supreme Being. If you are to consider the entire Supreme Being, you have to consider him as a big form then this heaven will form its head. It is only a part. We have taken the part as a whole and we have been doing a meditation of the part. Considering it as the Atman, it is absolutely wrong. There is a blunder you have committed. This blunder would have cost you your own life, not only your life, your entire family. Anyway, you are coming right time, I will correct you. Come on, second one. Uh, what is the meditation you are doing? He said, Sir, the meditation that I am doing is on the sun. He is the greatest of effulgence. Lord is supposed to be the supreme being, is supposed to be full of effulgence, absolutely resplendent in his glory. So, I was thinking of the sun as the Atman, as the entire supreme being, and I was thinking of his effulgence, and he's going everywhere. So, I have been doing my meditation for 50 years on that sun. My dear sir, because we have done on the sun, naturally we have got all the benefits of the sun. He has given you very good wisdom, he has given you name and fame, he has given you all the material goods. If only you have continued with this meditation for a little longer, it is a partial meditation. If you have continued with this, heavy disaster would have befallen you. It is good that you have come in correct time. Come on, next. The third one said, Sir, I have been meditating on entire space. He said, sun is only the eye of the Atman. It is again a part. If you are to consider as a being. Then he said, about the space, the vast space where all things are there. I was thinking that that is the Atman. He said, well you have got all the goods because the space is there. But that won't do. If you have continued, Disaster would have fallen, calamity would have overtaken you. You know, the entire space is, but the body of the being, that's all, from here to here, it's only a part. It is only a part of the whole. So it's again a partial meditation. You have done wrong. Right. We are coming time, otherwise you would not be alive. Then what is the next one? The next one said, on the air which is everywhere, I am constantly on it as Atman. Yes, the air is everywhere. That is why we have got a lot of vehicles with you. Wherever you go, so many chariots follow you. Plus you have got your fame, name, wealth, everything you have got. Very good. But if you have continued this meditation on air alone, well, great calamity would have overtaken you. Air is only the prana. It is the vital breath of the entire being. Prana is only one part. 
So we have been again doing a partial meditation. This won't do. Next one, what have we been doing? Sir, the entire ocean with its waters have been concentrating with all the waves, beautiful waves. I said that is the Atman and all the various waves, the ripples, they represent all the jivas, all the prisons, all the beings. I am also one of them and I am just going like a wave coming up, going down, coming up, going down, bar, death. So I have been considering that as the Atman. He said, look here, water is the lower part of the stomach of the entire being. If it is to be considered just like a man, this portion is just like the underbelly, the lower stomach portion of that. Again, this is a partial meditation. If only, this has given you all your medical research, but if only you had continued, you would have got either dropsy or some big problem in your intestine and you would have died. It would have created a lot of problems for you and in several births, you would never be able to reach the Supreme Atman because we have been doing such a blundering meditation for 50 years without ever bothering to check up whether it was correct. Thus, he said, look here, as far as the formless meditation is concerned, the formless is everywhere, it is everything. So the meditation to cover the entire thing, the totality of the reality, it should be all comprehensive about the totality of the reality. You should envisage such form which will extend from the earth to the heavens, from the heavens to the earth. Not only that, all the manifestations in between, without losing any link whatsoever, you should be able to comprehend the entire thing in your mind if you can. The entire totality, not only that, the final Lord Shiva, the Supreme Being, the Supreme Consciousness itself, whose one drop is the entire universe. It is only one drop of His power with which this entire universe has come. What about the rest? You will have to think of Him. Think of His analysis, Prakriti, which has created this entire world. So it has to be, you have any sense and all comprehensive reality with its unmanifested stage, with its manifested stage, in all its totality. And that is the total meditation. That will be the real meditation on that Vaishwamra Atman, who is the ultimate. And whoever the partial meditation in the formless one, they are good. I know many people. I know many people, I have seen a number of meditation books where they are written. Uh, the people may consider any of the following, very the following. And this ocean, these waves, these are very common, these are partial meditation. And unless one has read, see, look here. These Upanishads are all beautiful guides, if only you can. You think it's only a story and you don't understand, you go to us, then you are lost. That is why these things, they require your proper person to interpret them. Otherwise, you'll be reading them, Aneka Agartha, Pitan, Shiva, oh, that's okay. But you don't know the other side of it. If you don't think in this manner, if you are to have a force in meditation, to what stage it would have taken, you cannot imagine. Operation or our authentic record of experiences of great mind. They have had the inspiration, they have had the insight, they were able to go to the highest level of consciousness and whatever they have written, you can take it. They are 100% right. So, that is why this totality of meditation is given there is significant and after all there is no commentary. So we will only simply say, oh Shiva, Devati Pariyantam, starting from Shiva to this, they are all in me. So I should think like that, oh, after the next. But it contains so much of significance. How the way in which we go about going to the various gurus and somebody is having, you only think of a flower and you will get him. You think of the beauty of the flower. No. All these things can take you to some extent, but they cannot take you to the ultimate. It 
it is not a question of not only taking on the country if you are yet to have disasters and calamities what is the use of going on such meditation so now we go to the next yaksha kinchi jagat yasmin drishyate shruyate piva bahibantar vibhagen vyaptam tattakadam maya this is almost an extension of what we have already said the same thing is expounded in a, with different expressions yaksha kinchi jagat yasmin asmin ni jagati in this world yet the kinchi whatever little whatever drishyate whatever is seen in this world whatever object is all seen in this world shruyate jiva whatever object you have heard of your never seen we have heard of london we have never been to london we have heard of new york we have never been to new york we have heard of an electronic new machines which are not available in india so whatever you have heard but not seen even those including so whatever is available all the objects of the entire universe whatever you have heard whatever you have seen then bhagi antar vibhage mein vyaptam tat sakalam maya all those objects i am there outside them i am there inside them. Now, there is nothing but the supreme consciousness everywhere. It is like a dense fog. It is everywhere, everywhere. I can't call it a fog. It's all light. It's like a dense light. I can say. So inside that, several proxims, several barrels are floating. There are the various bodies, bodies of men, bodies of animals, bodies of gods. body the very object they are all there and the entire water has seeped into it the entire water is outside if you take a glass of water take it into the ocean keep it ground then what will you see both inside as well as outside it is all that ocean the ocean of sachidananda the ocean of existence knowledge and bliss that is that supreme absolute consciousness we think that atman is inside i didn't tell you in the story there is a there are two more points when he tells them finally he is explaining to them what is this vishwan or atman he says you people have done two big blunders number one you took the you did the part as a whole the second thing is you thought that this atman is somewhere inside us only in the absolute thing when you are going for that entire super consciousness when you want to be a meditation on it you cannot think of it as only here inside your heart because atman is see what you are thinking is you are thinking as if it is separate from you from the meditator otherwise how can there be a meditation meditation means you are self thinking on another object no you have to feel it you have to merge in it you have to be that shiva bhutva shiva iti when you are going to worship shiva you be shiva so you should envisage the entire thing and you think i am all that i am all that so even though the word i am that the i will have no significance you are that that's all you will remain as that only then we know i actually speak we are only talking to you for the purpose of understanding that i am that the word i am will never come you will be that only at that time that is how the meditation has to be done so he says you have done two atman is neither external nor internal it is everywhere it is complete don't think it is inside don't think that atman is somewhere else so you have to consider it as both external and internal that is why here we say bahihi antaha it is bahihi means outside antaha means it is inside also bahirantar vibhagena so normally we divide things 
this inside, this is outside. This is the vibhaga. This is the division we make. So both the divisions are full of that superconscious. Vyaptam. I am pervading everything in both the divisions, whether inside or outside. Satsakalam maya vyaptam. All these things have been completely pervaded by me. I am there in all, both inside and outside. <laughs> now we go to the next. Aham atma chiko kyanyaha paramatmeti yasmaram moha devam upate taha nashivatvam avatmiyat. Again, he is now telling how the meditation of I am that so him should be done. The moment you are thinking, I am different, he is different, and then you are giving an intuition that I am that. That is of no use. The moment you say I, you should think that I mean that Supreme Brahman only, there is no difference between us. So the question of thinking that I, Swami Shantananda, who is a man who was born in Sajjatiya, who is now in Thirvannamai, so I am the Supreme Brahman, so this is not a correct meditation at all. So he says, Aham Atma, Shiva Anyaha, I am the Self. And uh, Shiva is another Supreme Soul, he is a Supreme Being, he is different from me, like that, if a man is to think moha evam upaste, moha under such a delusion, if a man is to do meditation, upaste means one who meditates. If one is to meditate in this manner, that I am the Atma, and that Brahman or that Lord Shiva, whoever is there, that Shiva, whoever is there, he is another supreme being, he is different from me. So the man who thinks like that and does the meditation, Saha na Shivatam When you say I am that Shiva and you think I am the Atman and Shiva is the Paramatman, so we are different and then we are trying to equate ourselves. If you do like that, you will do In the beginning itself you should think that this Atman and Paramatman are one the same, there is nothing called Aham. There is no individual at all. Individual entity has never existed. The serpent has never existed. There has always been the rope. So remember the rope, think of the rope, remember the rope, never think of the serpent. Never think that I am a jiva. Never think that I am finite. Never think I am bound. Always think that I am liberated. I am that. I am shiva. I am all, I am all put in. I am all permissive. I am everywhere. Think like that and you will become that. That is only me. Moha Devam Upasthi. The one who thinks like that and then through delusion does his meditation in this manner. Saha. Shivatvam na vapnya. Na vapnya he will never get it. Get what? Shivatvam. He can never become Shiva. He can never become that supreme being. He will never be able to reach the highest level of consciousness. The supreme consciousness he will never be able to achieve. He will be only running around. He will not have the peace of mind. It will be a wrong type of meditation. So this is again another clue because many people think simply so and so and so. Uh, people think it's so easy life. So it has got a lot of significance. What I know is very little. If only some more expert is going to tell you, who knows what sort of further secrets they may reveal out of it. God only knows. Says Shivatko Navatmiya. Now we come to the next. Shivon Yastvaha Me Vanyaha Shivon Yastvaha Me Vanyaha Pratakbhavam Vivajjayet Yashivasogame Veti Advaitam Bhava Yetadam. This is again a repetition of the same idea as in the previous sloka. 
because these are all important so they want to import it to you through various expressions so that something or other will catch you somebody may understand one expression somebody may understand, may understand another expression so that is why they repeat repetition is a must in vedanta he says one should leave this separatism pratak bhavam means separatism the notion of separate bhava means notion pratak means separate separate different different vivardaye one should renounce one should abandon one should leave one should leave off this idea of this is separate this is separate where shivaha anyaha aham eva anyaha that shiva the supreme being he is different and i am different so this sort of separateness when you are sitting you are aham he is tah the moment you think that aham is different that is different then you will never reach the end of your uh, sadhana at all so if you leave off that separate notion that i am different and that supreme being the lord shiva he is different leave off such a notion then what you should do do is yaha shiva sah aham so from soham he is again expanding it as in the soham he says shivoham yaha shiva sah aham that means shivoham i am the shiva i am the shiva yiti advaita yiti advaitam bhavaye sada there is one he which is put there you cut it off there is no he yiti advaitam bhavaye sada the he should be deleted yiti advaitam bhavaye sada at all times keep that non dual sense never bring a duality when you are doing this meditation of soham because the entire soham is to leave off this duality and if you base your meditation on duality and then do this meditation it is not going to be fruitful it will be infructuous it will be negatory it will be useless hopelessly so advaitam bhavaya sada always keep it that i am the shiva i am the shiva i am the shiva i am the infinite being i have all the powers i am the supreme being there is nobody but me there are no objects in this world i can create all i am the creator i am the one who dissolves i am the one who sustains the entire world is dependent on me i am not dependent on anything external i am everywhere i am inside all the being i am outside all the being i am shiva shiva hum shiva hum that is how one should start so never never have the least idea that i am the meditator i am this finite being called shantananda i am this body and with that if you do this soham this soham meditation will not serve the purpose so yes shiva soham ye vedi whoever is the shiva i am that with that bhavana with that advaita bhavana advaita means the non dual there is nobody else but me there is only shiva and i am the shiva there is no i there is no shiva separately i am the shiva so always keep that bhavya keep it in mind meditate when you are walking it is not a question of the hour of meditation don't say only for the two hours and after so on i am thinking when well, coming back again you think i am shantananda no this is a 24 hour meditation when you are sleeping when you are dreaming when you are in new york when you are in ramanasam never think that i am a jiva i am shantananda think always that i am that i am shiva i am shiva shivoham shivoham now i'll read the other one and we will explain it tomorrow advaita so in this one you delete the word he it is he advaitam there is no he advaita bhavana yukta sarvatratmani samsthita sarvagam sarvadekatam vasyatyatrana samjayaha well the question will arise is it not a false imagination when i am not sure i do not know that i am infinite being 
This is what I have been told by the Guru, this is what I have been told in scripture, but I am still, even though I may say that I am Shiva, I am Shiva, still I will say, how can I be Shiva? One force of my mind is telling, it will be chuckling, it will be laughing at me, oh fool, you are Chantanda, where are you Shiva? You are going to die soon, you are 74 already, you are 78 already, your time is coming short, where can you be Shiva? Shiva remains forever. So on the one hand it will be telling, so how to do it, will it not be a false imagination, how to get out of this false imagination, how will this be beneficial to think even at the starting stage of meditation that I am Shiva, that will be explained in this.